So what we're trying to do here today and every day of our lives is figure out who and what and why we are. What is the self? What is no self? What is your self? And what is my self? Rolling. Okay, so there's many, 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 many different theories of self. Um, it's been addressed cro 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 cross culturally by many different um, sciences, psychologies, and religions. Basically, fucking everyone on the planet is just trying to figure out what the fuck the self is, who the fuck we are, and who the fuck everyone else is. There's a lot of different places that this conversation can go. The working definition of self that we'll be using, that I've been using, that my thesis has been using, is the humanistic definition of self. And the humanistic definition of self is self as a tendency and movement towards actualized full potential hmm so my question is how can we begin to harness this movement of ours this innate movement of ours towards our ultimate and actualized full potential And there's many ways that I found that we can do this. We can tap into that movement, something I like to call the current, and we can shape and form and interact and come into co-creation with ourselves and with the evolution of ourselves. Who are you and who am I? Something I want to talk about is existential, existential. Can you say that word? Existential, existential, existential. Existential, existential. <laughs> I always struggle with that word. <laughs> existential isolation. And this is a theory about how um, being with and in the self is actually the ultimate form of isolation. The self in itself is the ultimate form of isolation. In, in contrast to theories that believe in a more collective self. Um, this theory encompasses the fact that we will never, ever, ever truly know or experience someone the way that we know and experience ourselves. And nobody else will ever, ever, ever be able to know you or experience you the way that you experience and know you are a soul in a body that just can't be accessed by others. Like, you can't come into me and look through my eyes and feel what I feel and know what I know. It's just not possible. It's just not possible. It's just not possible. It will never be possible. It'll never ever be possible to access someone's full entire self from an outsider's perspective. So in exis, ex, existential, 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 existential isolation we 
talk about and think about what this means for our relationships with other people. I used to yearn for someone to know me, and I still do to this day. Like I, I have this fantasy that someone will one day want to know and know all of me, every part of me. Um, like I fantasize about that. I fantasize that there will one day be this human that will just be able to fucking know every part of me. And <laughs> it's just not possible. Not possible. Not possible. And so what I've learned, what I've done in my work with this specific topic is I've, look, I've begun to look at it as an opportunity, as an honor, as a pleasure, as a sacred, sacred act that in fact, I will never ever know anyone the way that I have the opportunity to know myself. It's an opportunity to know yourself to know the crevices of yourself, to know the deep parts of yourself that no one else can see. And that you'll never see in someone else. We are all we have access to when it comes down to it. To the end of the fucking day, we are all that we have access to fully and completely without reservation. Nobody can hold us back from knowing ourselves fully and completely. Self-observation, self-observation, self-observation. Um, self-observation is something that I've become incredibly invested in. It's a practice that has allowed me to discover who I am and the ways in which I'm changing. So the two main methods of self-observation that I work with personally are video journaling and diary writing. Um, the one we'll focus on today is video journaling. I use video documentation to observe myself and assess my own. So my video journaling story is a long one and I won't get into all of it right now at all. Um, but what I will say about it is that video journaling has become a tool for me to work with myself on camera. Um, it's become a place where I can speak out loud and um, kind of work through my inner emotional life and um, my thought process and um, it's just become a place where I can get to know myself out loud. Over the last two years, I've recorded about 400 hours of footage. 400 hours of footage. Another thing that has been for me, it's just been a way to track, to track the things that happen in my life. Something I'm really fascinated by is tracking transformation tracking transformation so very in line with the theme of this whole film and the theme of my thesis is i'm here to understand um, the ways in which we grow and evolve over time self-observation and video journaling specifically is a way in which i can track that process within myself to be able to do that, to be able to track and watch on screen my own change, growth, and evolution over time is incredible and has been so important for me on this journey to knowing self. It has been the key. It has been the key. I've been 
on a mission to know myself and to understand the ways in which I change and grow and evolve over time. And through um, this process of working with and working to understand who and what I am and what it means to be a human being, what it means to be a human being, what it means to be a human being. Um, I've come up with some of um, my own theories of self. So the three theories that I've um, come to work with are the current cocooning and chapters of self so I think a good place to begin is chapters of self so personally I feel as though I have been through many 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 chapters of self I've really had to work to understand what that means for me um, I feel as though I personally rapidly change. Um, I'm constantly feeling as though I'm coming into these new parts of myself and releasing parts of myself. And so what I've come to understand through this process of coming into new and releasing old within, within the self is that there's actually these distinct chapters and like for example right now I am most definitely in a very specific chapter of self and if I thought about it long enough I would be able to identify who I am in this moment in this chapter what characteristics and values and beliefs really make up who and what I am right now and in, in this moment of time but who and what I am right now in this moment of time is in great contrast to who and what I was five months ago, six months ago. Um, and that I, and so I can identify what my last chapter of self was. And if I really thought about it, I'd also be able to identify the chapter of self before that, and the one before that, and the one before that. And um, I'm curious if you would be able to do the same thing. I feel as though we all go through these changes and um, these processes of growth and evolution. And we can feel when we're ready for that new and next part of ourselves. Um, we can sense it and we can, and we can feel it coming. Um, and we can feel it coming. And we can feel when we're ready to release the parts of ourselves that aren't serving us and that aren't, um, that we're just ready to shed. Pause. Hold up. Wait a minute. Italy 2016. I mean, you are 21 years old. Apparently the age where your soul fully inhabits your body. And that's happening. And from here on out, you are going to be a fully embodied being for the rest of your life. And you know what it took to get you here, Julia? Your heart needed to break open. The shell of who you were needed to crumble completely before you were able to be reborn. And my fucking God, have you been reborn, girl? You've been reborn. Reborn! New York, 2017. I think when I, I've like, I've developed this 
way of painting and creating myself. Like, I feel like I've become my own masterpiece. And when I feel like I'm like literally a part of co creating who I am, I feel. I feel love for myself. I do. I do and I don't. 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 So that's chapters of self. So that's chapters of self. So that's chapters of self. And so then the next theory is cocooning. And cocooning happens in between chapters of self. And in my experience, in my body, in my life, um, cocooning has looked like um, I enter very literal cocoons. And what that looks like for me is um, nesting in my room, isolating from everyone, um, being surrounded by clothes and trash. Here, I'll show you. Here, I'll show you. This is what my cocoons look like. It's not fucking pretty. And it's not fucking sanitary. <laughs> and it's not fucking nice. And it's not fucking anything, anything pleasant. It's not pleasant. Cocoons are not pleasant, my dears. Um, and it's become like what I can identify it about it now. These are th th this kind of cocooning process I've had my I've gone through my whole life, and I used to have no idea what what it was, and I couldn't identify it like I can now. Um, but what I've come to understand from it now is in those moments where I I cocoon like that is actually this like grieving and release process of. Um, of mourning and releasing the parts of myself that are ready to leave, that are ready to die, that are ready to die, that are ready to die, um, to make room for, for the parts of me, to the things in me that are ready to be born and emerge. But like, fucking fuck, it hurts so much. It hurts so much. Like, literally, I'm dying on the inside. Parts of me are dying on the inside, and that shit fucking hurts. Ugh. Fuck. Oh, my God. It hurts so bad. Oh, but I must remember that the parts of me are dying in order to make room for the parts of me that are ready to be born. And that are ready to emerge. Um, and, you know, I, I have a sense that we all may go through this process. And, like, your cocooning process could look completely different than mine. But I feel like we all go through these moments of reevaluation and of release um, when we're ready for what's next and what's new. Literally again and fucking over again, I'm being asked to reevaluate who I thought I was and what I think my life is. We all go through these moments of reevaluation and of release um, when we're ready for what's next and what's new. Um, we must go through these processes of allowing um, parts of ourselves to, to leave and to um, be left behind in order to, to continue on the journey of growth and evolution. So that's cocooning. So that's cocooning.
so that's cocooning and then the third theory is the current and this is um, more abstract but also related to the humanistic definition of self that we were talking about so the humanistic definition of self will just backtrack a little bit and be reminded of um, the definition of self that self is a movement and a tendency towards full and actualized potential and so um, something that I've come to understand in my own life in relationship to that is there's this current that moves through me that is beyond me but also within me and this current um, in my life, in my experience, is what moves me forward on my path of growth and evolution. It's the force that propels me towards my full and actualized potential. Um, and I also believe that the current is also, you know, like, you can think of it as, like, time and space and and we're all moving through the current we're all moving with the current until we choose not to and you can step off the current you can step away from it and become stagnant that's possible we're not all on continuous paths of growth and evolution that's not everyone's story some people um stay the same for very long periods of time um and I feel like that represents a um, difference of someone who's tapped into the current and their own current and somebody who's chosen to stand on solid ground. Um, because, and, and standing on solid ground is valid and safe and important, important in these processes. Um, we can't always be immersed in the current because the current can be overwhelming and chaotic and um, if you're not if you don't understand it and you're not attuned to it and um, you're not grounded in it it can you know take you, um, you tumble around in there and um, get lost in the movement and the chaos of it all um, and that was me for a long time. I felt lost in the current. I felt swept away by the current. I felt like I had no control over it personally. That I, that the current was bigger than me and that I would never be able to own it as my own and um, find ways in which I can come into co-creation with it. I just can't wait master this current I think that's probably I keep waiting for life to just slow down but I think I just need to master the current instead of get rid of it I just need to fucking take it into my own hands and harnesses its power and a metaphor I've begun to use is like I feel like I'm learning how to swim with the current, how to actually be a part in its movement and um, create strength in myself as I move forward with it. As I move forward with my own growth and evolution, I feel like I'm in a place now where I'm in co-creation with it. Like, I'm not just mindlessly growing and evolving and not understanding um, the ways in which I'm changing. I'm now deeply in tune with that process and deeply committed to taking part in my own growth and change and evolution and um, defining and creating who and what I am. Hmm. 
and these theories um, are still just being born and um, I feel as though it is my life path and purpose to continue on this journey of discovering um, who we are and who I am um, and how we can become agents of change in our own lives and in our own selves. What is the self? What is the self? What is the self? What is it? What is it? Tell me! I said, what is it? Tell me. What is it? Tell me. What is it? Tell me. It's a journey of a lifetime. It's an opportunity of a lifetime to have this entity, this thing, this being that we get to explore and find out about that exists within and beyond us. Just wanted to keep that in mind as we move forward on this journey of discovering who and what we are, who and what I am, who and what you are. I really got to get it.